Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keaton. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Women on Demand, starring Betty Davis as Joyce and Barry Sullivan as David. <laughs> It's early evening, the Ramsey home in one of the more exclusive suburbs of San Francisco. So before you get too comfortable, darling, you better run upstairs and get dressed. We're going to the Foster's for dinner. Oh, must we, Joyce? I don't feel like going to a party tonight. But we're expected, David. Uh, where are the kids? The Dee just left Jim called for us. We'll see them at the Foster's. And Martha? She's not home yet. Drink your drink, dear. We can't be late. I can. Ah, but you won't be. The Magusons are going to be there. I don't know the Magusons. You should. He owns about six railroads. Joyce, don't you ever stop. Looking after you, never. David, about Martha. I'm certainly going to have to tighten the reins. She brought that boy to the house this afternoon. What boy? Well, the one from college, the one she's been seeing. Oh. Oh, David, he's impossible. His name is, is Polanski. Martha's four times as much trouble as Dee is. Of course, Dee has more instinct for the right thing and the right people in the first place. And she's your daughter, too, David. Hmm? Oh, oh. Uh, Dee will do all right. I was talking about Martha. I'm oh, sorry. What's the matter with Martha? Nothing. Nothing at all. Good. David, you're the one I'm really worried about. You are? What's wrong? Is it your work? No, no, it's not my work. And it's nothing to talk about anyway, not now. Don't you think I know when something's troubling you? You can't hide anything from me. Who said I was trying to hide anything? You need a vacation. I think I shall insist that you go away for a while. You'll do nothing of the sort. Darling, what I'm suggesting is for your own good. You, you don't have to snap my head off, you know. I'm sorry. I just thought it would help. You're getting stale. Did it ever occur to you that maybe everything else is getting stale? <sighs> you are in a bad way. The kind of a life I'm living is stale. The parties every night, the job, the whole meaningless mess. Mm, David, you'd better see a doctor. The whole thing is wrong, and all your platitudes aren't going to make it right. Joyce, I'm sick and tired of it. I want a divorce. David. Are you serious? Well, maybe this isn't a good way or a good time to tell you. Is there a good time to tell a wife that you're through with her? Yes. Yes, when a marriage has lost everything it's supposed to have. When two people get as bored with each other as you and I are. I'm sorry. Oh, David, I thought we had a good marriage. We did. What we had is gone. Joyce, Joyce, if I thought there was any hope for us together, I wouldn't suggest a divorce. That's the truth. You haven't held me in your arms lately, have you, David? You never will again, will you? You think I'm being distasteful, don't you? I look at you and I... I try to find the husband I've spent my life with. And all I see is a man trying very hard to be polite. Joyce, we're both adults. We can be reasonable about this, I hope. I won't go on living this way and you won't change. Oh, what is it you want, David? What is it you want that you haven't got? I don't know. But we have position. We have a family. We have success. Success is the answer to everything for you, isn't it? Yes, doing what you start out to do. That's what we've done, David. I'm leaving here tonight. I'm sorry, Joyce, but I think it's best. can't happen like this. It can't. A man walks out of a room, a door closes, and 20 years of marriage is destroyed in 20 seconds. How can a human being dismiss 20 years by telling you he's bored? I married you, David. It didn't matter that the whole country was in the depths of the Depression, that you were a small-town lawyer without a single client. It didn't matter because we loved each other. Because we knew what we could do together. Twenty years ago. Twenty years. I'd like to see Mr. Townsend, the lawyer. My name's Swanson. Mr. Townsend isn't in just now, Mr. Swanson. If it's important, I could get him. He's over at the courthouse. It's important. Will you tell me what it's about? I'm his secretary, Mr. Ramsey's and Mr. Townsend. I've got a new process for making fine steel. I want him to set up a corporation for me. I want him to get me some patents, too. I'm going to make this Townsend a lot of money. Patents, you say? 
to you, um, you know Mr. Townsend personally? No, but they tell me he's smart, young, and honest. That's the kind of a man I want. Well, well patent somewhere in Mr. Ramsey's line. Mr. Ramsey, you know, is Mr. Townsend's partner. He's an expert. Well, if he's an expert, maybe he's the man I want. Look, I've got just $20 in cash. I'm going to have to owe him the rest or give it to him in stock. Oh, Mr. Ramsey wouldn't mind that. Well, tell him I'm here. If you just take a seat, Mr. Swanson, I'll have him here in five minutes. He's, he's at the courthouse, too. Five minutes, Mr. Swanson. I could have told Mr. Swanson that David Ramsey is my husband, but I didn't. I could have told him that Townsend and Ramsey were now working for the WPA. A, a new courthouse was being built, and they needed day laborers. Anyway, a few hours later... Joyce! Joyce, look, $20. $20, my first fee. But you know, it just doesn't make sense. Why did Swanson come to me? How did he happen to pick me? Because you know so much about patents. Patents? Who told him that? I, I don't know, but you can study up on them. And he said he'd heard that you were honest and brilliant and, and hardworking. Oh, and... I don't know whether they kissed you or, or this $20 bill. Don't give it a second thought. I've never kissed a corporation lawyer before. <laughs> Swanson Steel Products Company. You like that name? David Ramsey, Jr. Do you like that name? Why, Jr.? Because in September, that's what our son is going to be called. Joyce. Dr. Nelson told me this morning. But you... We can't, not the way things are. Oh, but things are wonderful. Your first client, our first child, both on the same day. But, Joyce, we can't afford a family. Oh, we'll afford a family just fine. Oh, you're going to make money, David, lots of it. Oh, darling, don't sing the blues today. It's the biggest day of our lives. Look at you. There's nobody like you, Joyce. Here I am. I'm scared to death, and you're as happy as a jaybird. <laughs> baby who was going to be a boy it turned out to be a girl and we named her Diana. And to help save money for all concerned, Robert Townsend had moved in with us. One night after dinner, I heard him talking to David. No, I'm not kidding, Dave. I'm fed up. You've got a client who keeps you busy. You're a lawyer. And what are you? Pick and shovel, man, as long as the WPA will have me. I'm giving up the office. No, Bob, you're kidding. Now, look, I can carry you over. This Swanson account is good. You've carried me long enough. I'm quitting practice and getting a job. Well, you don't have to make up your mind tonight. Anybody home? Oh, come on in, Mr. Swanson. Hello, Dave. How are you, Townsend? Dave, take a look at these papers. Two steel mills in Detroit using my process to make steel. You've got to stop them right away. Send him a telegram to desist. He'll take action. I'll take action right now. Dave, you're leaving for Detroit tonight. Tell them we'll sue them right down to their pants. Who's going to Detroit tonight? He is. Oh, hi, Joyce. How's the baby? She's wonderful. Just understand one thing, Dave. We're a small outfit right now, but we'll fight like a giant if anybody tries to rob us of our rights. That costs money, Mr. Swanson. All right, we'll spend money. Here. Let me know if you need more. I'll tell them we'll sue for everything they've got. That's the kind of a lawyer I want. No telegrams, no letters. Just go and fight. You've got the right man, Mr. Swanson. You bet your life I've got the right man, and I don't mind saying she's the little lady that got him for me. She didn't say he was her husband. She just said he was an expert on corporations and patents. So I played a hunch. I said, never mind, Townsend. Give me Ramsey. Well, here's all the dope you need, Dave. Go and tell those bandits off. Night, Joyce. Nice seeing you, Townsend. Oh, I'd better see if the baby... Wait a minute. Yes? Joyce, can you explain what Swanson just said? What is there to explain? Did he ask for Bob that day he came into the office? Yes, he did. But as neither of you knew about patents, I came over and got you. Oh, stop looking at me as if I were a thief. David, that was the day I found out I was going to have a baby. Never mind, forget it. But Robert, I just couldn't tell David that we were going to have a baby the way things were. I had to tell him something hopeful. I wanted him to want the baby. Bob, Bob, look, we can work this out somehow. We can split Swanson's work between us. We can manage, Bob. We can straighten it out. When I practice law again, I'll do it alone. Bob, if you don't come in on this, I'll tell Swanson to get another lawyer. You tell him anything you like. Robert, I'll come you. back to my clothes tomorrow. Bob, no, you can't just walk out of here. Can't I? I don't want to talk about it anymore. Oh, Joyce, how could you do a thing like that to Bob? I'm going to call Swanson and tell him to get another lawyer. I'll tell him to get Bob. He won't take him, you know that. Then he can hire someone else. David, I meant no harm to Robert, but, but giving up the job won't do him any good. And it won't do you any good. It won't help anybody. And how do you think I can justify keeping it? Because you need it. Because you get along with Swanson. Robert doesn't. Oh, you can make it up to Robert some way. Joyce, you just don't do things like this to your best friend. All right, David. All right. If you think Swanson will take Robert, give up the job. Oh, but if you don't, please keep it. 
Keep it so we can have hope for our future. Oh, I've never complained about washing and ironing and, and doing over old clothes and, and trying to manage and, and keep the baby looking nice. But one day is just like the next one to me. I'd like to look forward to something better for it. Maybe what I did was wrong, but I didn't mean it to be. I know, honey, I know. I know things haven't always been what we'd like. I just can't stand your thinking that I... I'm sorry, Joyce. I'm sorry I got so... uh, Everything you say (laughs) made sense. Watson and I do click, but... Well, don't worry, honey. I'll square it with Bob as soon as I get back. I'll say Twenty years. Twenty years of making good, decent lives for each other and our children. And now David says he doesn't want me anymore. That our marriage has lost everything it's supposed to. Mother? Mother, is there anything the matter? Oh, no, no, Diane. I didn't hear you come in, dear. I must have been dozing. Mother, why didn't you and Dad come to the foster? Well, I should have phoned, I suppose, but something came up at the last minute, dear. You're... Your father couldn't go. Did you have a good time? It was a lovely party. Everyone asked for you. You will call Mrs. Foster, won't you? Yes, I will, dear, in the morning. No, go to bed, dear. Good night, Mother. I hope you feel better. Get a good night's sleep. Yes. Maybe that's what I need. A good night's sleep. <laughs> Martha, I'm coming. Isn't it a little early for the phone to be ringing? Yes, it was a Mr. Drake from the newspaper. You mean the man who writes the gossip column? I don't quite know what he writes, Martha. But what did he want? Well, I wasn't going to tell you this, but as long as it will probably be in the newspaper, I I might as well. Your father wants me to divorce him. Mother. But, but why? I don't know why. What are you going to do? Nothing. Don't you have to do something? See him or... or... I am not going to see him until he has time to come to his senses. This, this sudden impulse of your father's is not going to disturb our lives. He'll get over it, and the less we we talk about it or, or think about it, the better it will be. But if it's in the paper, people are going to ask questions. Jim will want to know. Tell Jim or, or anybody else there's nothing to it, and... And now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll go downtown and do some shopping. Oh, Martha, tell Anna I won't be back for lunch, dear. Yes, Martha. You you mean you're going to have lunch with Mrs. Blanton and Mrs. Gates? And Mrs. Garrett, dear. You know, we always have lunch on Thursday. But, Mother... Don't look as if the world's collapsed, I told you before. It's nothing but a sudden impulse. But why would Father want a divorce? Mother's been a perfect wife. Everybody knows that. She's never even thought of anyone but him. I just can't believe it. Not Dad and Mother. Mother won't divorce him. I know she won't. But seeing those friends of his at lunch, that's all they'll want to talk about. You don't have to worry about Mother. She knows what she's doing. Yes, I... Yes, she does. Oh, no, dear. We're just early. Sit down. I ordered you a martini. I need one. Can you gather that after reading Mr. Drake's column? Welcome to the sisterhood, dear. Oh, I hope you get a good royal joy. We're not at that stage yet. Though. I'll recommend a very able man. Fantastic. I'll take him in. This is a David Pay and David Good pay. But don't get a divorce, dear. Get a separation. He pays your expenses and you're still Mrs. David Ramsey and that hold for life. But isn't it better to get it over with? Well, I always thought so. Well, David's just in one of his moods. He's becoming frightfully antisocial. Antisocial? With you and your friends, maybe, but very amiable outside your own circle. Now, I guess looking for scandal, Edna. There is no other woman involved. Really? Well, he's been seen with one quite often. By who? Pat, for one. Elsie here for another. Well, tell her, Elsie. Joyce, I... I don't know if there was anything at all. I just happened to mention it to Edna. I wish I hadn't. Why? We're all Joyce's friends, aren't we? Oh, Joyce. Almost all men do things like this. It was while you were away last month. Then you all know about it. What, um, a kind of looking woman was it? Well, I didn't get a good look at her, dear. I've been paying attention. 
Besides, George told me it was none of my business. See how they stick together, these men. David isn't any better than the others. But David couldn't be seriously interested in another woman. So why did he move into the athletic club to build up his muscles? Don't be a fool, dear. <laughs> Quite nice, and, but I wouldn't say beautiful. She wasn't very young. If you'll excuse me, I have many things to do. I, I really must go. Now, Joyce, see Ted Prescott about this. Tell him I sent you. Now, I'll come with you if you want company. No, no, thank you, Edna. Oh. Oh, well, well, I'm 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 <laughs> I just want to find out if there, if there is another woman and who she is. Uh, yes, of course, Mrs. Ramsey. That's why I asked Mr. Pinkins to join us. Uh, well, Mr. Pinkins, what's his first name? It's just that I want to find out if there is any truth his to all this. His first name, please. Mr. Pinkins, you understand, is uh, an investigator. David Anderson Ramsey. The Anderson is a family. His business. He's vice president of the Swanson Steel Products Company. His club? Devonshire Athletic Club. We'll check on it, Mrs. Ramsey. The bill for services will be sent to Mr. Preston. That's satisfactory. Well, whatever is the usual procedure. You see, I haven't had any experience. Good day, Mrs. Ramsey. I'll send the report here. Well, thank you, Pinkins. He's really very capable. Yes, I'm sure he is. But whatever you may find, I still believe that reconciliation is far more satisfactory than divorce. Mr. Prescott, last evening my husband said he wanted to end our marriage. I don't want to be married to a man who doesn't want me. Of course, I still don't believe there's another woman. Well, don't choose. talk about it, then. Meantime, I'll call you as soon as I hear from Mr. Pinkins. Thank you. Hello? Mrs. Ramsey? Yes? Mr. Pinkins has a report on your husband. But what should he find out in, in two days' time? Sometimes it's easily established. I'm afraid the rumors you heard are correct. That there is another woman? Last night, Mr. Ramsey was in the home of a Miss Eileen Benson. Do you know her? No. Well, while he had no right to be there still, there was nothing untoward in his conduct, but he was there. Just who is your client, Mr. Prescott? Mrs. Ramsey, please. Now, well, I would allow Mr. I want you to get me a divorce. I wish said I want a divorce. Very well, then. Give me a week and I'll try to arrange it. I'll be quite ready when you are, Mr. Prescott. Thank you. Two of Payment on Demand, starring Betty Davis as Joyce and Barry Sullivan as David. It's a moment later, crushed and bewildered by the news her lawyer has just given her, Joyce Ramsey sits in her room, staring blankly out the window. A mind going back to the early years of her marriage. To the day her second child was born. She's a real beauty. David, let's call her Martha. All right, darling, Martha. And thank you for being Martha's mother. If our next one's a boy, we'll call him Adam. First man in the family. You have a full-size job right now supporting three women. I like kids, and you're so wonderful with them. We've got to start making plans right now for the two we have. I have plans, honey, big plans. First, Swanson Steel has closed the deal for the new plant at Homedale. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> You've been kind of busy the last couple of days, remember? <laughs> Second, our home offices will be in San Francisco. Then we'll be moving there. Uh, uh, that's third and most important. Between Homedale and San Francisco are some nice little farms. We run, we are going to live in the country. David, that's an impractical idea. Why? Lots of people drive that far to work. But I don't like it. I don't want to be stuck in some faraway patch in the woods. Never seeing anybody, never knowing anybody. Uh, George, I'm not talking about pioneering. You get a nice little place. It'll be good for the kids, honey. What's good about it? Who would their friends be? Farmhands' children? Crossroads' storekeeper's daughters? Where would they go to school? 
As soon as we make them tell you they're important. And they'll get a better idea of the values of life. Better values? Our children are going to have all the good things in life, all the things that you and I didn't have. Well, we had enough. We turned out all right. Oh, David, we have a... We have a leave this place and move to a big city and you don't see that it's important? Well, the farm was just an idea. A stupid idea, an imbecilic idea. There's no need to get abusive about it, George. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm nervous, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we're both a little on edge. You know, I worried about you a lot just as much as when Diana was born. I threw off the handle because, well, I know what a big man you're going to be. And I know you have much more of a chance to be brilliant if you're living among people who are doing big things themselves. I'm just a hick at heart, honey. And the idea of a little place in the country seems kind of good to me. Oh, David, later on we'll have a house in the country. Oh, but we're too young to bury ourselves now. We have a lot of living to do, David. Sure. Sure, honey. A lot of living to do. So we came to San Francisco, didn't we, David? And we made friends. People like you who were doing things, the big things in life. Oh, I remember how proud I was that night when we were invited to the <laughs> Sit down, Mrs. Ramsey. I've been wanting to talk to you all evening. I've just been wondering what happened to David, Mrs. Edges. He's in good hands, my dear. He's with my husband. Well, are you satisfied now? Satisfied? I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do. You've been angling for months to be invited here. Did you think I didn't know? Well, I'm sorry. Oh, you've done all the proper things. Let me teach you a drink. Slapped me about my clothes. You laughed at my joke. You're smarter than I thought you were, Mrs. Hedges. Or I'm less subtle than I thought I was. Your clothes are good, but you're a dull bridge player. I wanted my husband to meet your husband. Well, yes. they've done that. What's next? David may need finances. He may need business advice. If your husband likes it, we'll help him. Hmm. You are a ruthless climber, aren't you? You won't be a nobody. You'll connive, manage, maneuver. Uh, do whatever's necessary. So naturally, I'm interested in my husband's career. Would you like us to leave, Mrs. Hedges? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Joyce, I can't help thinking how you remind me of myself at your age. No wonder you recognize my technique. You recognize it. My dear, I invented it. <laughs> hey, how about letting me in on the joke? Oh, dear me, no, Mr. Ramsey. Sure, it would spoil the whole thing. Oh, you said hardly a word about the party. Mm, it was all right, I guess, except... Except that... what, darling? I don't like snooty people. The important thing is that they like it, and when the hedges like it, that means something. Doesn't mean anything to me. It will. You're the only one who means anything to me. You and the kids. Oh, Dave, darling, we have such a good life. Yeah, we're lucky, Joyce. We have everything in the world. Not quite, darling. Well, I don't know where I can reach him. Is anything wrong? Well, just a business matter. Joyce, I know I haven't seen you or David in almost 20 years. I... I've been foolish about David. He's tried to throw legal work my way. I've turned him down. Pride, I don't know. Yes, yes, he told me. Well, what kind of trouble are you in, Robert? Oh, I started a building and loan association. I made some loans recently that... Uh... Well, the examiners come in Monday, and I'm... About $15,000. I really don't know what to tell you. David's out of town, as I said, and I don't really know where he is. Well, that's my last hope. I'm sorry I troubled you, Joyce. Tell him I said hello when he gets back. I will, Robert. And him, Mother. Hello, darling. Run up and change your clothes. Daddy, no, he's away on a trip. Run along, Martha. Looks like David. But doesn't she? Yes, she does. I'm awfully sorry, Robert. I can't be of any help. Well, that's all right, Joyce. Goodbye. <laughs> A 
But who was he, Mother? That man you were talking to before. Oh, just someone your father used to know. But you said Daddy was away on a trip. Well, I didn't mean a long trip. I just meant a, a trip through the country. And how about a welcome home kiss? Hi, Daddy. Have a good game. It's terrible. Now, what's this all about? Completely unimportant. Except that he said I looked like you. Who insulted you in that satisfaction? It was no insult. She was nice. Uh, who's she rattling about this time? Well, Robert Townsend came to see you. Bob? Why didn't you phone me, Joyce? Well, I didn't want him to annoy you. Darling, please take your feet off that chair. What did he say? Oh, some tale of woe. He wanted you to lend him some money. Oh, I don't know, David. He has to have a lot of money he by must Monday. He be in a bad jam. Well, he might be in less of a jam if you haven't turned down every chance you offered him. Joyce, I think I'll drive up to Santa Rosa and see him. David, have you lost your mind? No, no, my memory. But you can't go tonight. We're going to the Clydes you, tonight. You go to the Clydes. David! I'll be back as soon as I... David went to Santa Rosa. He was gone all night. I was awake when he came in. I'm pretty tired, Joyce. I'd rather not talk about it now. You might at least have had the distance of the phone and say you'd be out all night. I didn't know if your car had gone off the road or what had happened. What did happen? Nothing. Well, I suppose you saw Robert. Yes, I gave him the money. I promised him more if he needed it. Well, I knew, of course, that you would. You're a fool, David. Your responsibility is not to Robert Townsend, but to me and your family. Our marriage is a partnership. It was a partnership, and we cheated Bob, too. Now we've paid him back. Oh, then it was conscience money you gave him. Call it whatever you like. I'd rather call it what it is, exhibitionism, being a savior of mankind. There's no sense in trying to save a man like that, David. There's nothing to him. There never was anything to him. You hate people who aren't strong and successful, don't you? I hate seeing you make an idiot of yourself with... Well, with that, I hope you get. Well, I have helped you every step of the way without me be nothing. And then you... Then you wouldn't be able to afford a, a conscience or, or to help your siblings. Crying friends, so-called. When are you going to come to your senses? When are you going to find out that there's something to life besides getting things? David, I have never done anything in my life that wasn't for you and your daughter. Get away from me before I tell you the truth about yourself. David. David, may... Maybe you should tell me the truth. Joyce. I'm too tired. Besides, there's no use talking about it. What did he mean that night two months ago? The truth about me, he said. What truth about me? But all my life, all I've ever done is to try to... Mother? Mother, may you come in? Come in. We didn't even know you were home until Anna told us. But you're all alone. Just kidding. Jim wants to take us all out to dinner. Well, that's very sweet of Jim, dear, but I don't think so. Please tell me you, Mother. You and he could get to know each other. I mean... No, no, I'm afraid I'll be tired, Martha. Besides, I... I can't stand the thought of facing people. Oh, no one pays any attention to a paragraph in Drake's car. I suppose your father thinks I'm a fool. You mustn't say that, Mother. I wouldn't say it unless I knew what I was talking about. Mother, do not set yourself like this. You've had quarrels before. But it's not a mere quarrel, Dee. Perhaps it is, Mother. Now, so what do you mean by that remark? I think people who love each other understand each other. I understand your father. Mother, don't work yourself up like this, please. No, no, I just took it that it was all beautiful while it lasted. Am I supposed to be one of those people who say, of course, we're divorced, but we're still very good friends? I won't do that. I won't be a hypocrite as well as a fool. You... Rather be alone now, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, dear, I would. Thank you. Come along, Martha. I'm sorry, Mother. Please, I'm going to see Dad. Your what? I'm going to see Dad. Right now. How are you, baby? I'm fine, Dad. I don't mean to bother you at your office, I'll but I... I get it. Does Mother know you're here? No, not exactly. I guess she thinks I'm with Phil. Dad, I don't want you to think I'm interfering or, or taking no, sides. No, I know, Helen. But please don't ask me to talk about it, huh? Going into it with you, well, I, I don't think it would be helpful or proper. I don't want you to, Dad. All I want you to try and do is, well, if you could hear from Mother, if she writes you a letter or something. Don't be too critical of what she says. Don't get to hate each other. No, we won't hate each other. Maybe this is just a solution to a problem. The only solution. Mother, 
Mother doesn't realize that. It's as if the floor is falling out from under her. She's all mixed up, Dad. Just, just don't get so sore at each other that I can't see you both whenever I want to. It won't ever be that way, baby. None of I can help it. Thank you. Well, goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, honey. And don't forget, if there's anything you need, you know where to find me. I won't forget, Dad. Goodbye. Yes? There's a phone call for you, Mr. Ramsey. Miss Eileen Benson. Miss Benson? Thank you. Put her on. Eileen? Good. I'm glad you can make it. Fine. I'll take you up at 7 o'clock. What time is it, David? Hmm? Oh, a little after 10. You want me to go, Eileen? Thank you. Sure, you like me sitting here with music. Exactly what I like. Does music like that ever make you feel lonely? When it's over, it does. Mm -hmm. Me? Well, it's hard to say what I mean or even how I feel right now. <laughs> no one explains what music does to you. Nobody should try it. You individually. If you like it, leave it alone, huh? I try to find out why. That's my way. But maybe I'm just too lazy to worry about it. You know something? You're very good for me, Eileen. I like being with you, David. I like you. I like your pictures, your books, the things you're interested in. The way you talk about things. I don't know. I just like it. Do you? Or is it just because right now you need someone to talk to? Someone... David, look, there's a man at the window. No, no, don't. Go. But he had a camera. He took a picture of us. Look, he, he's running down the fire escape. Eileen, I've got to get that You'll camera. You'll never catch him. Martin, no one should have a private detective following me. Eileen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be here. We both knew that. But don't you know what this means? If it gets out, it'll cost you your job at the university. It'll cost you more than that with your friends. I can't let that happen. I'm sorry it happened, David, but what can we do? We can get married. After the divorce, we can get married. Would you have asked me that? Earlier this evening. I'm asking you now. That Sweeten fought for him like this. But I don't think I'd want you to marry me just because a man sneaked up to your window and took a picture. But I mean, you'll have to stand this alone and they'll crucify you. No, no, they won't. They may try, but they won't. You don't really want to marry me. I know that, Edith. Mm. I'm sorry, Cindy, David, but it is. Eileen. Good night, David. Goodbye. Owner Long the Man, starring Betty Davis as Joyce and Barry Sullivan as David. <laughs> days have gone by. Joyce and David Ramsey are face to face again, brought in an atmosphere of bitterness and discrimination. As their two lawyers politely argue the terms under which a marriage will be destroyed. Now then, Mr. Barton, you said you had a definite proposal as to a property settlement. Each of us has a list of all things of value owned by the contestants. Mr. Ramsey proposes that out of the camp like this, the trust fund be set up for the minor child, Martha. <laughs> Martha alone? Well, the older girl, I understand, is about to be married. That would seem to assure her security, Mrs. Ramsey. Obviously, marriage does not provide automatic security for anybody. The trust fund would have to be large enough to cover both children. Do you agree, Mr. Ramsey? I should insist on it. I think Mrs. Ramsey's point is well taken, gentlemen. Very well. Make it a joint trust fund. So be it. Mrs. Ramsey, my client feels that he wants of his own free will and without court order. To give you one half of all his possessions, security, class, and property, a very generous offer. I reject that offer. But why? It is not enough. Well, I think that even Mr. Prescott will tell you that no court will possibly award you this generous respect. It is customary, Mrs. Johnson. I am not interested in what is customary or what the court will award me. I am only interested in myself and my children. Will you make a counter-proposal? Yes, if you will leave me alone with Mr. Ramsey. I will. 
Very well. Mr. Prescott, shall we withdraw? Uh, just call when you're ready, Mr. Andrews. Well? I'm prepared to file suit and to name Eileen Benson as correspondent. I have all the evidence I need. I thought I knew you, Joyce, but I guess I didn't. You know me now. I didn't expect you to blackmail me. I didn't expect to have to, David. I just can't believe this is you. You're a civilized, decent... Civilized? I'm being as primitive as you do. You want everything? You set the price for not having your new love dragged to the muck of a sensational divorce. You set the price for not having her, her family, her friends... Know what she is? You tell me what it's worth to me to be civilized. Or I'll show you how uncivilized I can be with her. Come in, gentlemen. Give her anything she wants, Barton. All of it or any part of it. Yes, now, is there anything more or can I do to her? Yes. Um, the custody of Martha, our debtor. Martha, will you come here, please? Hello, Martha. Hello, Dad. Martha, a young lady of your age, in a case like this, is entitled to select the parent of whom she wishes to live. You must know that uh, you are wanted by both your mother and your father. The decision is up to you, Martha. Uh, I want to live with the one I think will need me most. I've thought a lot about this. Dad. Yes, dear. I live with my mother. It's all right, baby. I'll say goodbye to Diana. Does, does this mean it's all over, Mother? Yes, Martha, it's all over. Mr. Preston, I should like to go away. I should like to leave town as soon as it is advisable. A long cruise, perhaps. I'll, I'll count on you to get things settled quickly. Of course. And I'll be happy to make any arrangements. Thank, thank you. It doesn't matter where the West Indies, perhaps anywhere but a long cruise. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just reading it. Not much, really. The weather's been pleasant. The people aboard ship are rather dull. Jamaica was terribly hot, and she thinks she'll call on Mrs. Hedges when the ship gets to Porto Prince. Who's Mrs. Hedges? Hedges? Oh, yes. I think she's someone she used to know. Oh, they had that big house. Wait a minute. There's a very charming Englishman who boarded this ship in La Guayana. Wherever that is. He's been rather attentive. And it does help to have some junior company now and then at dinner or bridge. Oh? His name is Anthony Tunless. However, I'm sure no one finds me very sociable these days. I'm just not in the mood. Please tell you that the next time... Well, Martha, I'm Port of France, the captain suggests that all passengers be back by about four o'clock, and there's a carriage waiting for us at the end of the dock. Now, uh, what else can I do for you? Oh, really, Anthony, you make me feel completely helpful. Oh, exactly my plan. Well, shall we uh, go ashore? Are you sure you want to come with me? You're not just being nice to go. Oh, of course I want to go. Uh, who is she? What's her name? Emily Hedges. She sounded so eager when I telephoned, I just couldn't get out of it. Old friend? Yes, a gay kind of old lady I knew years ago. She came here on a trip and decided to stay. I often wonder why. Oh, so there's a little curiosity next to your time. Yes, I'm afraid there is. Uh, Joyce, after we dock in New York, then what happens to you? I don't know. I may stay there for a while. Well, that sounds <laughs> promising. I shall be there at least a month. Oh, but you'll be involved, business friend. Not too involved. Well, meanwhile, let's call on Mrs. Hitchens. Hello, Joyce. Ramsey, my dear. Emily, it is so good to see you. You're looking well. Very well. Your divorce is pleased with you. Well, Emily, this is Mr. Tunley. Mr. Tunley. Hmm, yes. I'm so happy. Better meet you, Mrs. Hedges. Really? Oh, now, where's Arthur? Oh, I'm here. I'm getting a drink for your friend. Thank you, dear. Arthur's a poet. He's writing a history of the island, and I am distressed. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't Don't let him read any of it to you. <laughs> well, how's the cruise? Very restful. Oh, what a pity. Rest is a surrender to boredom, I think. A shameful surrender. What a charming place you have, Emily. Oh, wonderful. You don't have to go outdoors. 
You know the court, Mr. Tangley? I've, uh, I've been here a few times on business. Well, Mr. Tangley is here also on business, Emily, in England. You don't say. I've never been up in one. Arthur, Mr. Tangley is in the airplane business. Show him your mural. Arthur, show him your mural with photographs. There are airplanes with it, aren't there, Arthur? Oh, yes, in the ceiling part. Oh, would you like to see it? Uh, yes, yes, I would. Thank you. Now, excuse me, sir. Of course. Now we can have a chat. I don't want to hear a thing about home, not one word. Now, when does your divorce become final? <laughs> the 12th of this month. That soon? Have I changed much? Not at all, Emily. Thank you. I know I have. What do you think of Arthur? Oh, I think he's very nice. He's fantastic, isn't it? Is that what you... Is that what you want, Mrs. Tell? That's the fact. The words can't change them. Arthur's my protege. Without me, he'd have to start or go to work. <laughs> it's good to have someone around who can be grateful to me and help me up the stairs when I drink too much. <laughs> Emily, don't talk like that. Frightened, Joe? Hmm. It's a bad thing to be lonely until you do something about it. First, I had a dog. Then I had a lady companion. Now I have Arthur. <laughs> I don't know what I'll have next. <laughs> Emily, why didn't you marry again? Twelve years ago, I thought I might, but nobody asked me. <laughs> and the ones I asked, oh yes, I did that too. They never came back. <laughs> Be careful, Joyce. When a woman starts getting old, time can mean an avalanche and loneliness a disaster. Well, that's exactly what happened to me. That one, the Englishman, oh, well, he's very nice. Very nice. Oh, he's right on top of the Christmas tree. Do oh, right. sit down. I only sent you up so the choice and I could chat. Emily, we really have to go along. I have to stop either being Mr. Tunley. Has some people to see. Oh, Marcy. I'm afraid so, dear. I can drive them into town. They have a carriage, dear boy. You can fetch me a fresh drink and read your poetry to me. Goodbye, Joyce. Pleasant journey. <laughs> I'd love it. I'll, uh, I'll make it myself. I have a special brand. Can you have it in my cabin? Fine, I'll just drop these things off. Oh, Mrs. Ramsey, I have a radio ground for you. Thank you. Phil and I should be, should be married on the 10th. Can you be here? Love, Mark. And there'll be any reply, ma'am. Oh, oh, no, 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 not at the moment. Coffee is my specialty. You can stick to that, too. You know. Oh, there's a trick to everything that one does well. Uh, well. What are you looking at? The model on the table is lovely. One of your friends? No, no, that's my son. He flies one like that almost every day. Matter of fact, so does Kit. She, she's my daughter. And your daughter flies, too. Well, when her mother lets her. Uh, see? Thank you. Her farmer is foggy a good part of the time, and her mother doesn't like it. Oh, uh, do you take children? One, thank you. Then both children live with their mother. Well, they do when I'm away, but when I get home, they usually leave the place to my wife and me. That way, it gives us a chance to become acquainted again. I had no idea you were such a family man. Well, I am in my way, but I don't talk about them much when I'm traveling. It, just, it makes you rather lonely when you think of home and you're not there. Yes, it does. So I think of other things and do other things to keep from being lonely. You uh, you lead two lives, one at home and one away from home. That's hard to do, isn't it? Oh, not terribly hard. As a matter of fact, it becomes rather pleasant if you have to live that way. Uh, thank you so much for the tea. Oh, well, uh, change of plan. Yes, I have to talk. I'm leaving the ship before it sails. I had a, a radiogram from one of my daughters I'll fly to Florida and then on home. Oh, well, nothing serious, I hope. Serious enough to make me have to leave at once. Then you won't be in New York when I'm there? No, I'm afraid not. Oh, well, uh, that's rotten luck. I, I'm sorry. Goodbye. Oh, 
Oh, darling. Well, you were the last person in the world I expected to see. You didn't answer my radiogram. Didn't I, dear? I'm sorry. But here I am. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, come on upstairs. Come right in the midst of Poppy. We're taking the plane at 6 o'clock. Where are you going on your honeymoon? Nebraska. Bill has a job there. Department of Agriculture. We'll live in Omaha, of course. I don't know where yet. We just got the appointment last week. Oh. Is it to be a home wedding, dear? No, City Hall. But the wedding party will be here, and, and then we'll all go out to the airport. Did you notice the decorations? Yes. I didn't know if I were in the right house or not. <laughs> Aren't they corny? Dee nearly died, but they were having so much fun. Joe's mother and his family. You're a happy aunt, dear. Miss God, that happiness keep it safe. Make sure that it's forever. Marriage. Oh, Mother, I want you to be happy today, too. I am, dear. You're not much like me, Martha. You never were. That's one thing in your favor. You adore Phyllis, he is. Oh, yes, I do. Mm, don't try to make him into something else. If you love a man and you lose him, you... You may think it will make you an individual again. You may think that being alone will make you a person. It doesn't make you a nobody. Mother, no, no, don't bloom up, dear. Her mother just has to tell her daughter something on her wedding day. Mother, Dad's coming today. Will that make it awkward? I didn't expect you, you know. No, Mom. I do think perhaps you should phone him, though. He's living in Santa Rosa now. Living there? He's back in his old law office with Mr. Townsend. Didn't you know? No, I didn't. Have you seen him? Oh, yes, and he's fine. Oh, long distance, please. Phil and I went up to see him last week. And he took us on a tour of the town. Sightseeing trip. There wasn't much to see, I remember. What there is, we saw. Oh, Santa Rosa, 6240. <laughs> I'll be waiting. 